The opening scene features a famous lawyer named Lauren Monroe, who is currently being presented with a deal, a million dollars in exchange for defending a criminal in court. However, her unwavering honesty and her moral principles lead her to gracefully decline the offer. This is just one piece of proof that Lauren stands for innocent people and not for monetary gain. Lawyers get paid a shitload anyway, though. The scene shifts to her younger brother named William Monroe, a politician who is in an attempt to secure the mayor position of New York City. Next, we are introduced to Lauren's father, Archer Monroe, who is a wealthy business figure. He is currently walking in the woods when he suddenly feels difficulty in breathing. The old man somehow makes it to his car, but he tragically passes away during his drive back home. Shortly after, Lauren, who is attending a press conference, receives this news, leaving her heartbroken. The scene then cuts to Archer's funeral, where Lauren and her entire family gather to pay their respects. After the funeral, the siblings have a brief conversation, during which William reveals that their father was proud of her. They also discuss the prospect of shifting their mother to a new place that's closer to them. Following this, Lauren walks to her father's office and reminisces the fond memories of him teaching her chess, drawing the game parallels to life's complexities. A few days later, the family's attorney, Harold, shows up to announce Archer's will. The will designates Lauren's mother, Catherine, as the new CEO of their company. William is allocated with a sum of $20 million, while Lauren, due to some reason, is assigned with only $1 million. The remaining $50 million are stipulated for donations to the police and medical schools. Afterwards, Harold goes to talk to Lauren in private, during which she hands her a package left by her father for her. Inside it, she finds a USB device stick, along with a pair of keys. She inserts the USB device into her laptop and discovers a video message from her late father. In the video, he implores her to uphold a hidden truth and also expresses remorse for not being able to divulge it during his lifetime. The secret is, you're only worth one twentieth of your brother. In the next scene, a shocked Lauren decides to head into the woods to learn about the hidden truth. But before that, she is stopped by her husband, who seems to be concerned about her well-being. However, she just tells him that she's fine and that she just needs some time alone. Lauren then ventures into the woods where she discovers a locked surface that resembles an entrance. Using the key provided earlier, she unlocks the padlock on it, revealing a set of stairs leading down to a basement. Lauren nervously descends into the dark bunker. As she walks inside, she comes across a door and opens it, only to discover a restrained man. Though fearful, she walks closer to check on him, but his sudden movement startles her, prompting her to flee the bunker. Back at home, Lauren contemplates calling 911 for help, but her brother intervenes just in time. He empathizes with her over the unequal distribution of money from their father's will, and offers to share his portion. However, Lauren declines, asserting that money isn't a priority for her. Later that evening, Lauren gazes at a childhood photo of herself with her father and reflects on a past argument that she had with him. Turns out that Archer had asked her to represent his rich friends in court, a request she had turned down due to her unwillingness to defend criminals. Come on, honey, my friend Bill's not really a pedo, he's just acting like one. The next morning, Lauren decides to revisit the bunker, this time armed with a gun. As she enters, she finds the man asleep, so she discreetly takes his fingerprints in order to identify him. Just then, the man opens his eyes, prompting her to retreat in haste. She returns after a while with a face mask and asks his name. Surprisingly, the man knows every detail about Lauren and her family, including her birthday, her brother's name, and even her marriage against her father's wishes. Convinced by his familiarity, Lauren takes off her mask and queries him again. Instead of answering, the man questions whether she is a good person. Upon her affirmation, he urges her to release him, because that is what a good person would do. Lauren, however, remains skeptical, suspecting that he must have committed a grave offense to Warren his imprisonment. She tries to understand the situation, but the man firstly demands for a luxurious meal, including potatoes, steak, Caesar salad, chocolates, gold water cigarettes, and a bottle of scotch, alongside the request for a shave. Lauren threatens to leave him confined for a lifetime, but he knows that her conscience won't allow her to do so. Knowing that he has the upper hand, she decides to meet his demands and gives him a razor before departing. Upon returning home, Lauren scans the fingerprints and sends them to her family friend, Detective Emilio Sanchez, asking him to run a check on it as soon as possible. After this, she purchases all the items the man had demanded and returns back to the bunker. Since the man is provided with such delicious food after many years of confinement, he digs it all up with tears of joy. Lauren offers him a chocolate bar, which makes him even more emotional. The man recounts how her father would offer him a square piece of chocolate once a year, while leaving the rest untouched on the shelf to taunt him. After devouring all the food, he finally reveals himself as Morgan Warner. He also grabs her hand, and then 
apologizes, saying it's been a long time since he had human contact. Following this, Morgan begins to unravel his backstory, disclosing that he had crossed paths with Archer three decades earlier and formed a quick friendship as they shared similar tastes in gambling, money, and women. Their bond eventually led them to become business partners. According to Morgan, one midnight, Archer was drunk driving while he was in the passenger seat. Tragedy struck when Archer struck a pedestrian, resulting in his immediate demise. Morgan wanted to call the police, but Archer insisted on disposing of the body, believing that it was an accident. When the two got into an argument, Archer locked him up in this very bunker. Additionally, Morgan discloses Archer's affair with a woman named Sophia, who had everything that Catherine lacked. As a result of this, Archer used to refer to her as his Gypsy Rose. Lauren doesn't believe in his words, so in order to back up his claims, Morgan gives her Sophia's address and urges her to check it herself. He also asks her to verify with Harold, who has been with Archer for years. Enraged, Lauren wants walks away, and she is clearly unable to process all of these revelations. Regardless, she somehow manages to remain calm. She then contacts Emilio, tasking him with verifying the background of a certain Morgan Warner. Following this, she drives towards the provided address and meets Sophia. When asked about her connection with her father, Sophia responds that she met Archer in a poker game. Did she say poker? <laughs> As the two continue chatting, Lauren notices a photograph of a young boy, prompting her to ask about him. In response, Sophia reveals a startling truth. The boy is her son, Alex, who also happens to be Lauren's half-brother. Overwhelmed by all of this, Lauren leaves with tears in her eyes. Later on, she visits Harold's office and unleashes her fury on him for hiding such a big secret from the family. In response, Harold says that it's his responsibility to maintain confidentiality. Lauren then asks about any additional hidden information, to which he says that there's nothing else that could harm her. He also claims that he'll still keep the rest of the information hidden, suggesting that she move on. Subsequently, Lauren goes to her mother and inquires if she's familiar with Morgan Warner. However, the name doesn't trigger anything as she has no idea. Then, William enters, appearing to be stressed. When questioned, he says that he is losing votes, despite doing everything he can. William then urges Lauren to join the campaign rally due to her reputation for honesty, to which she hesitantly agrees. On the same night, Lauren again goes to the bunker, aiming to uncover more insights. She asks about the whereabouts of the pedestrian's body that her father had buried. Responding to this, Morgan proposes a deal. He'll take her there, only if she'll grant him freedom thereafter. Although reluctant at first, Lauren agrees, and they venture outside. Morgan's emotions surge as he steps out of the bunker after such an extended period. He cannot believe that he has finally managed to get out. In the next scene, Lauren follows Morgan's directions and drives towards the woods. After a while, they come across the burial site, and she immediately starts digging. Her fears are soon confirmed when she unearths a human skull, validating Morgan's claims. Overwhelmed, Lauren reburies the remains and returns him to the bunker. She then orders him to don his metal collar again, but he begs her not to betray him. Citing her identity as an honest lawyer, he tells her not to replicate her father's cruelty. Morgan also voices his own suffering, recounting that he was unable to attend his mother's funeral due to his confinement. He begs her to let him spend his remaining years in peace, vowing to disappear from their lives without causing any harm. Arm. But despite his heartfelt explanation, Lauren, who isn't sure about anything anymore, apologizes and departs. Afterwards, she calls the detective to ask if he got any information regarding Morgan Warner. But the latter says that it might take a few more days. I can't believe this guy's not suspicious. The following day, Lauren visits her brother's office, seeking guidance and pretending that it's for her court case. She presents a hypothetical scenario, asking what he would do to someone who possesses all the secrets and also poses a threat. In response, William offers two options. Options, disposing of the person's body in a river, or paying the threat to disappear forever. This guy was born to be a mayor. After careful consideration, Lauren heads back to the bunker with a bag and makes Morgan promise that he'll vanish forever. Once he does, she instructs him to prepare for his departure, assuring that he'll be freed that night. Following this, Lauren approaches Harold, asking him to arrange one million dollars and a private jet for the person her father had wronged. Despite Harold's inquiry into the motive, she opts not to disclose it. Later, as Morgan readies to leave, Lauren asks him if her father had mentioned anything about her. He reveals that Archer was very proud of his daughter, but he didn't like the fact that she opposed his friends. At this point, Morgan reveals another
another secret. Her brother, William, has been bribing the union representatives. Enraged, Lauren immediately heads to her brother's office and confronts him. In response, the latter admits that it is important to bribe for advancing in rank. He asserts that even their father had resorted to bribery in order to secure her position as a district attorney. Hearing all this, an enraged Lauren slaps his ass and walks away, warning him not to deceive her again. In the next scene, Morgan finally leaves the bunker, taking a chess piece as a memento. As he steps outside, he inhales the fresh air and experiences a sense of liberation. Lauren then escorts him to the private jet, where Harold provides him with new identification cards and briefs him on his account funds. As Harold and Morgan board the jet, Lauren drives back to the bunker to clean the place. During this time, she discovers a bottle of poison beneath the bed. However, she doesn't react, deeming that everything is over now. On the other hand, Emilio locates Morgan's file and delivers it to Lauren's residence. In the evening, Catherine arrives home and opens the package. A few moments later, Lauren enters the room and sees her mother looking at her package. Scared, Catherine expresses her concern, asking why Lauren has a picture of Carson Thomas. Lauren clarifies that his actual name is Morgan and proceeds to truthfully disclose that her father had confined him in the bunker for an extended period. In response, Catherine unveils a shocking revelation. The man is, in fact, a ruthless serial killer. Catherine asks where he is right now, to which Lauren tells her that she released him. In a state of panic, Lauren rushes to the airport, only to discover the lifeless bodies of Harold and the pilot. She soon realizes that Morgan is now after her mother. Lauren then speeds back home and freaks out when she doesn't find Catherine there. Terrified, she rushes to the bunker and finds her mother lying down unconscious. While she checks on her mother, Morgan shows up from the shadows and plunges the area into darkness by switching off the lights. He then launches a sudden attack and ties her up. Upon regaining consciousness, Morgan discloses the actual truth that he was the one to administer the poison on her father that ultimately claimed his life. He also recounts the night when he gave a pill to Catherine and forced himself on her. Archer spotted him doing so, and as a result, he drove Morgan to the bunker. On their way, Morgan distracted Archer, resulting in a collision with a pedestrian. Further revelations indicate that Morgan was the one who buried the body, despite Archer's objections. When Morgan opted to pin the entire blame on Archer, the latter retaliated by physically subduing him and confining him to the bunker. After hearing all of this, Lauren tries to sway him, assuring that she'll help him with justice for whatever her family did to him throughout the years. However, Morgan asserts that he just wants revenge, expressing his desire to make them endure the same misery that he suffered for three decades. He also unveils his strategy to destroy the family's reputation by exploiting the secrets he holds regarding each and every member. In a dramatic twist, he finally reveals himself to be Lauren's biological father, leaving her stunned. As all of this is happening, Catherine, who has come back to her senses, grabs the gun from the ground and shoots him in the head, ultimately killing him. The movie ends as the mother and daughter douse the bunker with gasoline and burn it to the ground. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.